I've got a little game. It's called Spot the Vegetarian. <laughs> is it me? Or is it Mr. Universe winner, Barney Duplessis? I'll give you all a few seconds to mull on that one. Ready for the big reveal? The answer is Barney, who is in fact a vegan. Some surprises there. Now, I ask because I often get asked if I'm a vegan or a vegetarian by people who don't know anything about me. And statistically, they would be correct, just like all of you who guessed it was me but changed your mind because it was too easy. Two thirds of the vegan population in the UK and the US are women, two thirds. Now, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian. And every time people ask, it throws me. I see myself in their eyes and I suddenly feel small and pale and meek. And then <laughs> I find myself over emphatically telling them, I bloody love meat. <laughs> It's like something rises up inside me and I feel the need to assert myself and to let them know that I am a serious meat eater. They should not perceive me as small or pale or meek. I puff myself up as some kind of steak aficionado as if to stand my ground. I might as well be challenging them to an arm wrestle. It's ridiculous. It's also worrying. Why as someone who works for an environmental charity and create campaigns to help people eat less meat, do I take offence at being called a vegetarian? Why do I unconsciously feel that the opposite of meat is weak? Now, the gender divide around vegan and vegetarian diets, alongside research from the University of Southampton, suggests that I'm far from alone in this, and actually, it's much greater for men. They found that a high number of vegetarian men express shames, feelings of shame or embarrassment in relation to their decision not to eat meat. Eating meat sends deep-seated signals about who you are in a way that eating toast doesn't. <laughs> now you may laugh, but there's something going on here which we need to address today to avoid dire implications for the generation of tomorrow. Now, it's no secret that meat has long been a status symbol, synonymous with muscle, virility, wealth, and health from the dark ages when only the landowners could afford to regularly feast on the flesh to the front cover of contemporary men's health magazines, which herald high meat diets. Meat has long been the foodstuff and the protein source of the highest order. It's been the food of the powerful, and so it has become synonymous with power. But what we eat has implications beyond our identities. Our meat consumption has helped to fuel the climate crisis and when eaten in excess, it has grave implications for our health. With global meat consumption set to double by 2050, the environmental and public health challenges we face are too great for the issue to be bound up with identity politics any longer. We need to strip meat of its symbolic power. Just as the Me Too movement has challenged the male power which underpins our institutions and places of work to great effect, we need to challenge the power of meat, which underpins what we choose to eat. And what would the outcome be? No, not a nanny state of imposed veganism, but a world where people can find healthier ways to express who they are through their food choices, free of outdated labels about who they are as a person. So how do we come to be in a place where meat is a means to show strength and power? Well, in short, meat's high status is grounded in the early drivers of our consumption. It's a hangover from a time when scar starvation <coughs> was a constant risk. And because our food preferences likely evolved in a harsh environment, a desire for a nutrient-dense and energy-rich food such as meat was key to survival. Now, 2019 research suggests that the link between meat and survival is still very much alive today, and it's greatest for men. In a study that explored sexual motivation, 1,600 straight men and women were asked to look at sexy images before being asked to choose between meat and non-meat dishes. 
they found that when men have sex on the brain, they go for the meat-ish dishes because they think it signals their strength and increases their desirability to women. And the women? Well, according to the study, women don't use status markers in the same way when it comes to sex appeal. Now, it's not too much of a stretch of the imagination for us to see how meat then moved beyond simply standing for strength and survival and came, at least in the West, to stand for culture too. It at once represents man's domination over nature and the very fuel that fed our unique cultural development. Some argue that meat is the very embodiment of progress. And so it was born, a foodstuff that boasts both sex appeal and cultural cachet. But here we are in 2019. We're in a world which largely regards men and women as equal. And we're in a world where few of us still need to hunt for our food. And yet, meat's historic status still shapes our identities and is driving consumption to record levels. We're eating ever more protein, largely animal-based, than we need. In fact, you may have noticed that we're amidst something of a protein fever here in the UK. You can find the word splashed across a crazy number of foodstuffs, from protein-fortified Mars bars to protein-fortified cheese. I mean, personally, I thought that cheese was already pretty high in protein, but <laughs> what do I know? You can even pay a premium for a protein-fortified beer. Cheers. This, <laughs> this feeds off a lack of understanding about where protein naturally occurs, such as veg, pulses, nuts, seeds, seaweeds. For many of us, protein simply equals meat. As it stands, 60% of men in the UK, compared to 25% of women, exceed the guideline daily recommendations of no more than 70 grams of red or processed meat a day, which makes them much more susceptible to the illnesses related to high meat consumption, such as coronary heart disease, cancers, and high cholesterol. At the same time, in a six-year period, we have seen a 70% rise in male eating disorders and body dissatisfaction, especially when it comes to muscle mass. A 70% rise. Now, apart from promoting an archaic, unhealthy, dare I say toxic, version of masculinity, our meat consumption is doing great damage to the planet. Let's talk about that. It takes 25 times more energy to produce one calorie of beef than it does to produce one calorie of corn. At the same time, 80% of the world's agricultural land is given <coughs> over to meat production, which emits a whopping 14.5% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. That's greater than all of the transport sector put together. I hope you'll be pleased to know that the world's leading health and sustainability experts are taking this seriously and they are calling for a rapid 50% reduction in meat consumption and a doubling of fruit and veg if we are to feed a growing population and avoid climate catastrophe. In short, meat production is woefully inefficient. And the rustic allure of modern meat marketing, which we're all exposed to daily, belies the waste, brutality and exploitation at the heart of modern meat production. Worse still, we can literally track the economic development of a country by its increase in meat consumption. The developing world is following suit and using meat as a marker of wealth and progress. And the multi-billion dollar meat industry is doing everything in its power to promote this and to get per capita meat consumption up to what we have in the UK, which is double the global average, and where 67% of people think that meat eating is natural, normal, and nice. Now, when unchallenged, this innocuous trio, natural, normal, and nice, do a fantastic job at promoting the status quo and we can see that they are perpetuated and manipulated by more than just the food industry. They're present in countless political and marketing campaigns which aim to appeal to our core values and speak to the people. For example, when Nigel Farage goes on his tours of boxing rings, butchers and boozers, he suggests that it's natural for the Brits to want to be British. 
that is to say, they are entitled to their pints and pies. And when Trump fills the White House with burgers, the rhetoric is, what could be more American than a burger? Both imply that meat eating is a feature of the collective national identities of these strong and powerful nations. Similarly, when I'm talking to men about meat, I'll hear things like, I'm a man, you can't take that away from me, I like meat. Or, just doesn't feel like a meal without meat. Or, men like to barbecue, it's natural, it's the cavemen in us. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? What's happening here is a fear of change, which amounts to a fear of loss, loss of a known identity. Perhaps what it means to be British, or perhaps what it means to be a man. In reality, if Nigel Farage's party don't come into power, we're not going to see a decline in pints or pies. And similarly, eating less meat is not going to cause anyone's cock to drop off. <laughs> <laughs> we need to show that there are a million ways to be a man, that there are a million ways to show strength and status. And in order to do this, we need a world where plant-based is the option for the bold, the strong, and the intrepid, and where men and women can find a language to express a want for something other than meat that will not mean less. So how would we get there? What would shifting the social norms around meat consumption look like? And finally, some good news. The movement is already afoot. Norms are changing. You'll remember our friend Barney, the vegan bodybuilder. Well, he's not alone. Alongside the Me Too movement saw the rise of generation moderation. Young shoppers are cutting back on the amount of meat they eat. Moderation is the new cool, says the Daily Mail. Generation moderation will take on the next century alone. And they face a unique set of concerns in the face of an increasingly volatile and uncertain world. In fact, I met a marketeer the other day who described these guys as Gen K as in Kate the Katniss from The Hunger Games. They see it as their job to save the world, she said. They gain cultural cachet from eating for the planet. For Gen K, it's cowardly to eat meat. Bravery and status come from taking on the climate fight. You'll see what Gen K have done is flip the poles entirely, removing meat from its former association with strength and survival and giving, putting, making it the polar opposite. For Gen K, the v vegan wears the hero's badge. They have put what it means to eat for survival in the context of the world today. Gen K help us to see that a desire for meat once was key to our survival, but now predisposes us to the diseases of overconsumption and destruction of the planet. To eat for survival today means to eat for the planet. Gen K have also helped us to see that eating meat is not necessarily natural, normal and nice. But what about those of us for whom natural, normal and nice is not going to change overnight? Those of us who don't want to or aren't ready to go teetotal on meat? Well, we too can cut the power of meat simply by highlighting the alternatives. Let's not evoke fear through talk of loss or less, but simply demonstrate the power of plants. We can show that plants are packed with protein and that low or no meat meals still taste great. We can make eating the rainbow the new norm. The future's not written, and we all have the power to shape it today, this dinner time, and three times a day for the rest of our lives. Whether you're a chef, an athlete, an influencer, a brand, in a band, a mum or a dad, this is a call to move beyond meat as the measure of a meal or what it means to be a man today. This is a call to move beyond meat as a symbol of status and send a signal to all of those who have their eyes on the diet of the West. Time for me to stop hogging the attention. Let's give something else a try. And finally, me. What will I do next time I'm asked the dreaded veggie question? Smile. Thank them for the compliment. Assuming that I look fresh and healthy and strong because my vision of a veggie has changed. I'll tell them that I still eat some meat, but prefer plants, before beating them to an arm wrestle. <laughs>